Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. Hope you are having a fantastic hump day. This is the Wednesday edition of EP Live, and thank you all for joining us. We are going to get started with your rundown, and I've got a couple of dedications to go through here. Mr. Chance wrote, uh, keep up the amazing content, Victor. Thank you so much, Mr. Chance. And Jerry Campbell Greer, who always has really nice things to say about our work, you also get a dedication as well. And finally, NV Coates, the Oscar-winning editor of classic films like Lawrence of Arabia, The Elephant Man, and Out of Sight. You have to see Out of Sight. Such a great classic film. Uh, has died at the age of 92, um, and so we're dedicating this to her. And uh, let's get started with your rundown. Valve and Steam are making mobile gaming a lot better. A new iOS and Android app is on the way called Steam Link, which, which will allow players to use and play any Steam game on their smartphones. You won't be able to leave the house, unfortunately. Your phone will still need to be, need to be connected to a host PC on the same local network, so you won't be able to go too far away, but this does give you the freedom to keep gaming while you're in other rooms. Steam Link will support MiFi controllers or MFi controllers, including the Steam controller, Valve is also working on a second app called uh, Steam Video, which will allow you to watch movies and TV shows that you've purchased. Both apps launch in the coming weeks. I was thinking about this the other day. Now, I know that this wouldn't be uh, great news for Apple or um, Andrew, you know, Google uh, if there was like a Steam dedicated section or a Steam app that lets you just download your PC games on a phone, but you can feel like we're starting to move in that direction, you know, that portability of the content that you get. I mean, we, we can do that with books and movies and music and stuff, so why can't we do that with video games? All of these invisible barriers that, you know, keep us from being able to play our games anywhere that we want to, I think they're gonna be slowly but surely dismantled. We're seeing things like, you know, Fortnite and PUBG being almost the exact same experience on a mobile game or as a mobile game on a mobile phone right now and i think we're going to see a lot of that start to happen in the next five to ten years but of course all the gatekeepers and everybody that's sort of blocking all of that stuff from happening right now all have to work together and get along and it's a very big idyllic dream right now very utopian all right, let's get moving into some uh, movie news here. The next movie from Get Out's Jordan Peele has been revealed. The filmmaker has announced that his next movie is called Us, and it's due to hit theaters in March 2019. Like Get Out, Peele is serving as both writer and director. This guy is a genius, and the log line describes it as a new nightmare. So expect chilling horror alongside cutting social commentary. Variety reports that the film will star Black Panther's Lupita, uh, Lupita Nyong'o and Winston Duke, along with The Handmaid's Tale star Elizabeth Moss. This will be Peele's first film made under a lucrative first look deal that he inked with Universal Pictures after the blockbuster success of Get Out, which made a fortune for the studio and earned Peele an Academy Award, a well-earned Academy Award. Uh, this guy is incredible, and I feel like it, Get Out was such a, uh, a home run for him and for the studio that there is, you know, going to be a lot of expectation and a lot of pressure, I think, put on Peel to kind of always come forward with some kind of social commentary and, and uh, be a little bit smarter than just a genre picture. Uh, but he's got it in him. The guy is incredible. He's a comedic genius and, and uh, clearly the guy knows how to put together a fantastic story that resonates. Can't wait for us. Now, it doesn't sound like EA is going to be letting up on loot boxes anytime soon. In their latest call with investors, EA CEO Andrew Wilson insists that loot boxes and games like Battlefront 2 and FIFA do not count as gambling. As other publisher, uh, publishers have argued, he says loot boxes don't meet the legal definition of gambling because you can't cash out your winnings and exchange them for real life money. Not everyone agrees. Several governments like in Belgium and the U.S. state of Hawaii are in the process of banning loot boxes or at least preventing games with them from being marketed to children, which could prevent EA from using them regardless of what Andrew Wilson thinks. This issue isn't going away anytime soon. For those of you still playing Battlefront 2, EA is launching a new season of the game dedicated to Han Solo just in time for the new movie Solo A Star Wars Story. It includes new events, modes, and a new multiplayer map based on Jabba's Palace. That begins rolling out May 15th. Now, wouldn't it be great if we did uh, some awesome Star Wars Battlefront news without tying it to a story on loot boxes? I would love 
for us to move beyond that with that great game that so many incredibly talented people have uh, poured their their hearts and souls into. But that's exactly why Andrew Wilson and his executive team has got to start pulling back. They, they shouldn't fall on their swords for loot boxes. They need to kind of distance themselves even from the stench of it, you know, even from the implied kind of aspects ar around loot boxes. They are not consumer friendly and consumers are not happy about it. And consumers have some protections and they have some, you know, recourse now to kind of, uh, you know, rattle their sabers and shake, you know, their signs and their, uh, and their wallets uh, away from companies like Electronic Arts if they don't make them happy. And I, I, I understand that this is, you know, huge billions of dollars in losses, but I think the long-term effects could be really massive if these guys keep sort of thumping their chests and saying, no, the loot boxes are important for the health of the business. They may have been. There might have been some great uh, things that occurred through the use of loot boxes, and I would argue that even the idea of collecting cards in sports games really ties into the idea of, of going to the corner store and buying bubblegum packs with cards in them. I see... You know, uh, that makes sense to me, but perhaps we have crested on how many billions of dollars can be made off of things that could be deemed to be gambling. You know, I think if there are governments involved saying, look, we got to, you know, we got to protect the way that consumers engage with this material and so many people are up in arms about it. Probably a good move for publishers to think twice about these kinds of things and definitely not, you know, stand up on a soapbox and and go pro loot box. That's just me though. All right, now uh, let's move on. Um, we've got uh, EA also stirring up big trouble for another big gaming company. In that same call with investors, CEO Andrew Wilson revealed that they estimate Microsoft has only sold 30 million Xbox One uh, consoles since it was launched in 2013. That is less than half of the 73 million PS4s sold by Sony. Uh, that was that estimate, I think, was at the end of 2017, so they're, they're probably closer to 80 million by this point. Microsoft themselves haven't released uh, official sales figures for the Xbox One, but EA would obviously have inside information given that they make games for both systems. If these numbers are accurate, it means that EA and other third-party developers will likely be more interested in the PlayStation going forward, but that doesn't mean anyone is giving up on the Xbox. Microsoft just revealed plans to build a new AAA development studio and increase the number of exclusives coming to the platform. Listen, this is not a surprising piece of information here. The PlayStation 4 has been crushing the, uh, the competition rate since it was launched, and Sony did all kinds of really smart things to get people hyped on the PS4. There are lots and lots of happy PS4 gamers out there, and it's all around the software. Pricing was good, hardware was good, all of that, but it's about the software, and that's exactly what I and millions of people around the world have been telling Microsoft how they should run their company by investing lots of money into their software. And I think what's happened is they, they had this whole Kinect debacle that they kind of had to write off and write down, and now they can sort of say, that's behind us, let's move. We have to uh, uh, not only salvage this machine, but sort of prepare for the future of Microsoft as a really big games purveyor. And that, the only way they're going to be able to do that, they got to they got to shell out some of that uh, dinero, and they're going to do it. And we're going to see something really exciting at E3. Mark my words, it's going to be cool. Uh, here's some other game news, some disconcerting news for a lot of publishers that had some secrets uh, sort of planned for E3. It looks like Microsoft and other big publishers will be announced, uh, announcing more than a few big games at E3 this year. Walmart Canada's website has posted listings for several unannounced games, including Gears of War 5, so that's going to be fun to play that this year. For the Xbox One, a new Splinter Cell game from Ubisoft. I'm looking forward to that. I can't wait till you announce it, Ubisoft. Rage 2 from id Software and Bethesda. Now that, now that is a big surprise. Rage 1 is kind of a buried treasure. I really enjoyed that game, but it was uh, not all that it was uh, cracked up to be. Not all that we, we hoped for. Um, we've also got the long-awaited Borderlands 3 from Gearbox. Johnny and I are going to be talking about that a little bit later in the show. And Just Cause 4 from developer Avalanche Studios, which is also another shock. Walmart has since taken down the listings, indicating that they were posted prematurely. 
So don't be surprised if all of these games get an official unveiling at E3 next month. The event kicks off June 12th, and um, the event kind of kicked off yesterday for us with EP Live, but uh, I think almost every day from here on out, we are going to be sort of in E3 mode. Next week, I'm going to be checking out some uh, uh, early code. I don't think I can say anything more than that, but I'm going to get a, a, an early look at some games that are coming. Um, and of course, today, I'm going to be joined by Jose Sanchez live. He's going to talk to talk to us about some of his predictions and hope, hopes for the big show this year. And then later in the show, we've put together a nice big video for you uh, with Johnny and I talking about our predictions for E3 2018. That's Johnny from Happy Console Gamer. Uh, but right now, let's take a look at this day in everything cool. Welcome to this day and everything cool for May 9th. On this day in 1980, one of the most iconic horror movie franchises hacked and slashed its way to the big screen. The very first Friday the 13th movie hit theaters in the U.S., chilling audiences with its gory tale of camp counselors picked off one by one by an unseen killer. The franchise is known for its hockey mask wearing villain Jason Voorhees, but he's not actually the killer in the first film. He wouldn't take the role until the sequel a year later. The first film screenwriter Victor Miller has admitted that they basically ripped off the idea from another horror movie, Halloween, which had kicked the slasher genre into gear two years earlier. Friday the 13th, along with Halloween and other franchises like Nightmare on Elm Street, shaped the entire horror landscape for more than a decade with an endless stream of sequels throughout the 1980s. A more sophisticated kind of horror movie landed on May 9th, 1958, because that's when Alfred Hitchcock's thriller Vertigo got its world premiere in San Francisco. The film stars James Stewart as a retired police detective hired to follow the wife of a wealthy businessman who leads him into a strange and possibly supernatural mystery. Like Hitchcock's other films, Vertigo saw the advancement of many visual effects techniques, including matte paintings, miniatures, and compositing, although the film itself might not have been as great an achievement. It was met with mediocre reviews and was a box office bomb when it first came out, failing to live up to Hitchcock's other films. Vertigo has since seen a resurgence in popularity and risen to new heights, and in 2016, the British Film Institute named it the best film ever made. May 9th, 2012 saw one of the biggest game franchises make the jump to consoles and start the path to an even bigger change. The blocky sandbox game Minecraft was released on the Xbox 360, making it the first console edition of the game. It had been released on the PC a few years earlier and was already a global phenomenon, and the Xbox 360 version featured a redesigned crafting system, new in-game tutorials, and split-screen multiplayer. It was a success critically and commercially and eventually led to even bigger changes. Thanks in part to the success of the 360 version, Microsoft bought the entire Minecraft franchise along with developer Mojang for $2.5 billion two years later. They've continued to release versions of the game on new platforms ever since. We are back and speaking of E3, we are joined with a veteran of many E3s working for Electric Playground. He's one of our favorite people in the world. He's my brother from another mother. This is Jose Don Fubar Sanchez, your humble king of the world. Good to see you, my friend. Good to it's see you. It's always good to be seen, Victor. <laughs> it's always good to be seen. Did you lose your razor? Uh, yeah, no, I just decided I was going to grow a beard. This is like a couple weeks worth. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. I'm almost in a man. That's awesome. Finally. Well, you know, we're uh, seconds away, it feels like, from E3. I just dropped the uh, the news that Walmart leaked about a million games. <laughs> Good I job, Walmart Canada. Uh, just cause four. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! So um, I don't know if there's anything left to predict. You're just you're psyched for Rage 2, and it was great having you. No. Here's a War 5. <laughs> See you there. All right. No, what do, you, what do you hope for? What are you hoping for? What are you really psyched for? What do you know will be there, but what do you hope will be at E3? There's a lot. I was making a list before we started, and I was just thinking about some stuff like, oh, you know, like, God, I'd, I'd love to see like a new Borderlands. Oh, that was leaked. Thanks, Walmart Canada. I'm like, <laughs> oh, man, Gears would be great. Oh, there's a Gears coming, I think. So Walmart Canada just hooking it up with all the info. <laughs> um, but for me, there's I'd like I'm ready for a new I'm ready for games that we haven't seen in a while. Yeah. You know, like I'm, I'm ready for a new Splinter Cell. Ubisoft has got a lot. I'm ready for a new Prince of Persia. Like, I think we're due. We've gotten so many Assassin's Creed games. I think they can take a year off our Assassins. Yeah. Jump back into the Sam Fisher world or Prince of Persia world. I'm down for that. I'm ready for that. Um, Left for Dead. Left 3 Dead, I think it would be called. They did another one. This would be the third one. Mm-hmm. Left 3 Dead. Okay. Okay. Left, uh, save, left, save Left for Dead. But I think, you know, the world is ready for 
um, I think every game to sort of have uh, this year is going to be the year of the battle royale element. I know. In every video game. <laughs> have you been like going? Super, I want I want Super Smash Royale. <laughs> it's just well, going to be like multiple people everywhere, giant worlds of battle royale, Super Mario characters fighting to the death. But, be the last man standing. Battle Royale has meant many things. Like there's lots of wrestling yeah. games over the years, and and I think there I'm was a saying, battle start, royale mode. And, yeah, and so I, I'm just saying you can thank wrestling games for that. <laughs> All those people that have been knocking wrestling games for so long, you know, you can do battle royales and wrestling games for the longest time now. Are you a, a huge Fortnite or PUBG player? Do you play those those games a lot? Uh, you know, not really. Yeah. I mean, I played a little bit of PUBG, played a little bit of H1, played a little bit of Fortnite, but I just, there's just so many people that are so much better than me in those games. Right. And it's like, and it's like, cause when I'm streaming, especially, it's just the most exciting content of me just hiding in a toilet stall <laughs> with the camera angle, like ledged over the side. Like I can see, <laughs> I can see if he's coming. Like, that's what it is. People are like, what are you doing? You're not playing the game right. I'm like, no, it's all about survival. <laughs> so I will hide in the toilet stall with my shotgun, <laughs> wait for people to come at me. And then yeah, that, is, that is not blasted. thrilling content. And I, I, yeah. I, you know, like I got out there the first time that I played PUBG and I ran over somebody in a car, but I was never able to replicate that again any other time that I tried playing that game. It's a very those difficult once in a lifetime game. moment. But it's going to be a very influential uh, genre. We're going to see pub, or you know, battle royale modes and everything, Call of Duty everything. and Battlefield. Call of everything. Duty Royale, Red Dead Royale. Yep. I want uh, uh, Spelunky Royale. Spelunky 2 is coming. They could have a Royale mode in there. Spelunky 2 is going to come? Yeah, well, they announced it at uh, PlayStation uh, PlayStation Gamers Week or whatever the hell Okay, cool. Called. December. Okay, so we're, we're going to get it this year then probably. Spelunky 2. Okay, it's so gonna, we won't hear gotta, from Jose for another year or two after that. I don't know, man. It's It's got – it's been taken – like my, my love for Spelunky has been taken over by my favorite indie gem, Dead Cells. Right. Which I cannot wait for that thing to come to the Switch. Because when it comes to the Switch, it's game over. I can't even think of anything else coming out on the Switch this year. I'm like, Dead Cells? Dead Cells is coming? That's all, that's all I need. What more do I need than Dead Cells? Okay, all right. Well, this give is, us give us some of your, um, your you know, the, the games that we might be surprised that you are hankering for, that you really hope we'll get some information uh, well, of. Uh, one that's been up in the top ever since I kickstarted it in like 2015, I think it was Shenmue 3. Right. They announced that they're coming out with the remastered editions of 1 and 2. Yeah. Which hopefully will have a crossover saves. I can bring that into the world of Shenmue 3 because that was the big deal with the first Shenmue came out on Dreamcast. Like, you can port your save over to the second one. And I was like, well, I played the first one on the Dreamcast and the second one came out on the Xbox here. <laughs> Couldn't really port my save over. <laughs> Still got my VMU somewhere with that game is saved. Like, I'd like to play a game of Lucky Hit with all that stuff that I learned in the first Shenmue game on the second one. <laughs> Unless I'm getting like a European or Japanese version of Shenmue 2. So, it's not wait, well, so let me get this straight then. You will then, you will go back and play all of Shenmue 1 again just so you can port your save to Shenmue 2 and then do it again to Shenmue 3? Yeah. You're going to do it all. Yeah, I guess you will, right? You'll stream the whole yeah. damn thing. Ever since yeah, I've known Jose... I don't know if I know anyone that has loved Shenmue more than this guy. He has always been able it. to. What's what, what are your favorite? My jacket. Yeah. What do you get? A little band, a little Nelly Band-Aid on my eye right here. What are your, some of your favorite lines from Shenmue? Uh, the best is, Fuksan, Fuksan. Would you like to try a game of Lucky Hit? <laughs> Fuksan, Fuksan. I just love Fuksan. I'm just Fuksan. I want to see what Fuksan's up to. What about the sailors' line? How does that go? Oh. Uh, um... I, I can't talk about the Sailor's Line, Vic. It's, uh, <laughs> it's rated PG show. Uh, you don't want to know what Rio does to the uh, the, the sailors in Shinmu 2, let alone what he's going to do in Shinmu 3. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so but not, no, like, none of the, I'm, ready, I'm ready for that. Not, none of the art style or anything like that? Like they're trying to go for a Dreamcast look? None of that bothers you? You want it to be the, the aesthetics no, of the I, old games? I feel like it's like uh, Fallout. Like Fallout has always had that Fallout look to it. Yeah. It doesn't they don't need to go? They can. They can. I know they have the power to go super crazy, realistic, and over the top. But they keep it with that traditional Fallout look, at least that we've seen since Fallout Three. Right. Um. That I. It's fine. It's fine. Keep me in that world. Keep me immersed in the world I know and love already. I'm good with that. Awesome. Okay. Just so make I, the game already. I believe you're going to have your dream come true with Shenmue Three. Are there any others that you want to talk about? Um, well, a game that I know is coming out for sure, Spider-Man. That game looks so good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. That new spider now, That's going to give me those Spider-Man 2 vibes. Have you heard right the rumors here. of Superman coming this year? I, 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 I've sort of given up hope. 
Rocksteady is rumored to be working on a Superman game. It, it was, it's been sort of floating between Justice League and, and Superman and another Batman. But the, uh, the le- there is a leak out there that it's going to be a Superman game tied to the Arkham world. And it's going to be a massive that. new sort of engine and a new way to combat and fly around and do all kinds of stuff. Imagine Rocksteady making a Superman title. Yeah, I mean, they're not going to miss. They won't have the energy of Dax that I appreciate coming from Rocksteady that just brings the fury every time he talks about a Batman game. Yeah. So not having him talk about a Superman game would be kind of disappointing. Um, but a new Superman game that doesn't suck. Yeah. It's, that's like hoping for a new Star Wars game to come out. Dude, like, is, is it ever going to happen? Who knows? You're, you're me right before Arkham Asylum came out. And I, I think there are very few developers in the world I would trust with a Superman experience. Rocksteady is one of them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just going to be like, you can punch everything. Like, you come into contact with Batman. Just throw him into space like you should have done in the movie. End scene. <laughs> Fight is over. <laughs> Batman loses. I, like it should have happened in the movie. I don't think Zack Snyder's... You throw Snyder's... the doors off the Batmobile, you throw Superman, or you throw Batman into space, and he can't breathe, and then he dies. Zack Snyder can't like... make a movie that short, man. We know that's impossible. He can't ah, do it. What do we do It's just like the, it's like Infinity War. It's just like oh, all of a sudden, like Batman, Superman come into contact the first five minutes of the movie. <laughs> yeah, you evaporate. Okay, all right. Any other Any other games? Oh man, my list goes on. I'll just run yeah, off. Yeah, come on, let's hear it. I'd love to see. Uh, I want to see a new Elder Scrolls. Yep. I don't think we're going to see list. that though. I know we won't. Yep. I know. Um, the new Metro game looks good. Uh, Shout out to the Tomb Raider looks good. Uh, they announced new uh, Soul Calibur, which I was pumped about. Yep. Um, you know what game's going to steal the show? It's going to be Harry Potter Wizards Unite <laughs> Mobile. The Pokemon Go frame of <laughs> Harry Potter games. Everybody's going to be out. Hunt. Expecto Patronum. <laughs> Expecto Patronum. It's, it, it's, Expecto pa- it's not healthy to drink in the mornings there, Foops. <laughs> hey, I got to stay hydrated. It's Tons okay. of vodka. It gets me fueled. There will Dude, be plenty okay. of... It's going to be Battle Royale clones and Pokemon Go clones all over the place, right? Yeah. Somebody's got to merge those two genres. So you're running like, you know, around... Like see, uh, with an, I'm ready for a new Bad Company game. Yes. That would be out of nowhere, yes. right? Everybody expects Battlefield 5 or whatever, Battlefield 1 Plus or 2, whatever the hell you'd call it. I don't know what you'd call it this point. Now, are, are, like new- are you working no. uh, the EA uh, event this year at E3 as well? Yeah. Do you already have some EA insider play, info play then? Again. Do you know what's going on? I don't, no? but I'm just saying, like, if they're watching, okay. bring that. They have a lot, like, new Dragon Age. Throw that out out there, you know? Like, yeah. I'd take a new Dragon Age. Yes. It's been a while. I know. Well, that would be a, if they t- teased Dragon Age, because I don't think they can have anything that can upset Anthem right now, right? They've got to be all sure. engines fired on Anthem. But if they tease right, Dragon that. Age, that would be cool. That yeah. Hopefully. I mean, yeah. The game looked great last year. Yeah. Haven't really heard much since last year. We already know a, a lot of the big ones that are coming out, right? You mentioned Spider-Man know, already. We know Last Walmart. of Us. Uh, you know, new Walmart. Well, I'm ready for the Walmart uh, E3. Are they going to have a booth? <laughs> the Walmart Canada booth with all the games for sale that are announced. Like, well, how are you selling these games? They were just announced. Like, I don't know. Free, free for now. I, I wonder if some people got fired at Walmart Canada today. <laughs> this is not a, not a good day to work in the video the game best. department over there. It's, yeah, it's, it was always that feeling of like all the developers were like, dude, we've kept this a secret so long. It's going to be so good. Wait, what, what happened? Canada and why is it always Canada as well? It's like I think last year there was another Canadian leak as well, wasn't it? Dudes, I mean, yeah. You're just trying to get ahead of the game. I, I guess so. It. Yes. I hustle, hustle never sleeps in Canada. <laughs> we are we are passionate about our video games up here. All right, so I'm going to see you uh, not next week, but in a couple of weeks. We're going to be working together at E3, and together we will film a segment of you uh, with tears streaming down your face playing Shenmue 3. I can't wait, and I'll be playing Lucky Hit. I'll have my Shenmue jacket on. It'll be very <laughs> snug because it's built for a tiny Japanese man. I'm still <laughs> just ripping out the shoulders. Well, I, lo- I love that Shenmue 3 is the thing that you're hot on. I think that's a very surprising choice, my friend. It's great. I know. I mean, I could, you know, Death Stranding. I want to see more of that. But it's probably like two years away, a year and a half away. I think it's out next year. I think I think next year is the last glory year for the PlayStation 4. So I think they got to uh, they got to get them all out by next year. I think. I hope so. Yeah. I don't know, man. Sort of the end cycle of the PlayStation 2 was such a good time. I know. 
And it's like end cycle PS3. It was like, all right, yeah, but it's also the time when all the all of us are like, why aren't I playing this on the new PlayStation 3? You know, like because you get half of your games on the new machine. We are going to have a good show, though. I think this is going to be a very big game centric E3, and I'm fired up. I, me too. Cool. Give me, give me the games. Okay, we will give you the games. Foobs, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll have you back very soon. And uh, we'll talk about more games and more stuff. And uh, you rock. Have have yourself an awesome day. Thanks for thanks for being here. I will. Okay, pal. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Canada. See you soon. Thanks, Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a look back in time with a new buried treasure. Today's Buried Treasure is dedicated to all of those parents out there who love to go trick-or-treating with their children. This is a game called Costume Quest, and there was also a terrific sequel, Costume Quest 2, developed by Double Fine. First one was out in 2010, second one 2014. You dress up in costumes in this, you go trick-or-treating, and then you get into giant Final Fantasy-style battles where the costumes that you're wearing actually become the abilities that you have. So a giant robot suit made out of cardboard, you become a giant robot with huge missiles and all kinds of cool explosions and stuff like that. Uh, there's magical creatures and all kinds of great little variations in there. It's just so clever and so darn cute. And the sequel amped up the gameplay, gave you a lot more variety so that, you know, they absolutely progressed this series. I really hope we get a Costume Quest 3. Something tells me that we probably will. Uh, many parents out there, many people, gamers out there, look back on this series a lot of fondness, but there are also tons of people out there that have never seen this. Uh, Costume Quest 2, backwards compatible on the Xbox One, so if you, you got it for the 360, you can still play it on your Xbox One, um, and you can get it as a brand new experience in your Xbox One. The graphics are all going to be a little bit dated, and there are certainly better looking RPGs out there, but these are solid titles, and that's why I deem them both buried treasures. Always great to do a segment with my buddy Jose Sanchez, and it's always great to learn more uh, about the classic games that might have passed us by over the years. And uh, I think right now what we're going to be doing is talking about uh, my continuing adventures in the city of Gotham. Yes, I have become addicted to this television show that stars Ben McKenzie and uh, David Mazos and Son, Sean uh, Putre. Her tree. There's lots of names. I can Marina Baccarin, uh, Robin Lord Taylor. Lots of good character actors in this thing, uh, and it is a gorgeous show. As I talked about in my season three recap, I spent some time not too long ago and sort of binged the whole of season three. And I decided I'm not going to try to binge everything in season four before I come back here. I'm going to sort of break it up into into chunks of three. So I've watched the first eight episodes. And again, what I would say about this show is don't consume it super quickly because it just starts to kind of get very samey samey although by season four what's uh, really impressive for me a lot of my complaints about season three is that gordon really wasn't uh, you know taking the reins and the ownership of being a leader and that's absolutely starting to happen in season four it's not just growly punchy guy he's actually got some uh, you know levels of depth and empathy and he's been through hell and he's maturing and he's maturing you know in the role and he's maturing as an actor and he's really looking ben mckenzie's looking really comfortable in the shoes of james gordon and he actually uh, takes the reins of uh, leadership, which is really cool to see. And the other thing that's really cool to see is um, Bruce Wayne, uh, David Mazous, or Mazous, I don't, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, is doing a fantastic job just growing up. I mean, he's uh, 18 now, or 17 or 18 years old, and so we've watched this little kid become Bruce Wayne, and he actually starts to get outfitted and take over the kind of mantle of somebody that is, uh, you know, ready to fight for what he believes in. And he has to do some despicable things. He encounters uh, Ra's al Ghul or Ra's al Ghul uh, at the end of season three, and he has to do some horrible things uh, with Ra's al Ghul in the first chunk of uh, season four, which was pretty exhilarating, exhilarating to see. Uh, but all, all of it is leading to this nuanced performance of Bruce Wayne as a human being, you know, and we don't really get that too often in the uh, in the cinematic work that we get around the character of Batman. So we're starting to get to know this kid who is training. He's got some, you know, elements of his suit starting to come together. He's not afraid to go out at night and do some patrolling and beating up bad guys. And he's kind of convincing. And, and in this, because he's kind of screwed up at the beginning of the season by some of the events that have unfolded, he's 
suddenly becomes a regular teenager and he goes out drinking and, and uh, you know, does some silly things and he sort of pushes himself in limits that he hasn't done before, but all of it is part of his maturation process and I'm digging what they're doing with the Bruce Wayne character. I'm also liking how um, the Penguin character is starting to uh, become less of a fidgety, you know, like worried little character that sort of snuck into a leadership role and now he's got the darkness ever since he froze Edward Nigma, the Riddler, and put him as a cornerstone or a central centerpiece inside of his uh, nightclub. He's felt like this real champion, and he, anything he says and does goes, and he's doing a great job at sort of adding, uh, you know, layers of complexity to that role as well. Uh, they, they kind of uh, dressed up uh, Robin Taylor a little bit differently, too. They've got a, he's got a spiky haircut to sort of augment his spiky nose, and he just looks more penguin-like than he ever has in uh, in the series so far. He's doing a great job. And of course, nobody dies in this show. So somebody that we saw, uh, you know, presumably, actually a couple characters that we saw presumably pass away in season three have returned. One of them is now Solomon Grundy. So we get the Solomon Grundy uh, origin story in the very, you know, opening acts of, uh, of season four. And it's kind of ridiculous, but it's also kind of working. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's memory flashbacks with this character thinking about the life that he once had and, uh, and there's some characters that he cares about sort of come back into his life. I'm trying not to spoil too much because you, uh, you should find your way to watch some of this content as well. Uh, all in all, I think season four is off to a, with a bang, and I'm actually really looking forward to diving in and uh, checking some more out. I'm not going to just keep binging all of it, though, because I don't want to feel like I'm just, you know, soaking up in, in uh, you know, that same kind of vibe over and over and over again. I would say that the show suffers from the lack of ability to get rid of characters. This, uh, you know, I know that there are contracts tied to this work and uh, you know, expensive, solid actors that are sort of depending on the livelihood and all that stuff, but, and there's also ties to the fiction of Batman that a lot of these villains have to just continue to, to persist and be a part of Batman's uh, you know, day-to-day later on in his, uh, his story. And so the writers are kind of hemmed in by that, but there's some characters that you know, should get killed and disappear and we don't see them again. And uh, uh, it's kind of ridiculous and the characters are actually commenting on it in the scripts in the show that nobody really dies. It's Gotham. And, you know, there's a million ways that you can get, uh, uh, you can come back to life in this city. And that becomes a little preposterous. But that's also the kind of the campy charm of Gotham City and the whole Batman rogues gallery and that whole universe to begin with. I'm digging the beginnings of season four for Gotham, I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. And right now, we're going to take a look at some other predictions for E3 2018. I got together with Johnny Millennium from the Happy Console Gamer, and we had a good conversation about what we're hoping for from the big show. All right, my friends, Johnny is joining me from Happy Console Gamer, and we are going to talk about our predictions and our speculation and desires for things that we want to see at E3 2018. And i got to say this to begin with, Vic, how many E3s have you been to over the years? Uh, this will be my 24th. I've been to every single one of the E3 events that has happened so far, and I, I am excited. How do, about yourself? Do you know how many I've been to? <laughs> zero. <laughs> Absolutely zero. And it's become a very different entity over the years now, yeah. hasn't it? Yes, it has. I mean, last year was the first time that we streamed on Electric Playground all the press conferences. We had our mutual buddy Baruti in, yes. and we stayed in the studio and streamed as they were happening live. We're going to do that again this year, and that was a revelation for for me because every year I have gone to those press conferences are very exciting because you're like oh, in you're the right room. Part of the excitement of it's everything. very cool, but you're kind of sort of uh, hemmed in by what you can actually report on. And sometimes we would shoot some material after the events and then you know send it back to HQ and it would be cut into a show or something. But doing it live while people are watching everything to is a whole reactions. different thing. Even yeah. I think this year I'm going to do it live myself. It's yeah. going to be a very really exciting time. But we're going to start with our predictions. What would you like to see from Sony this year? Ah, well, PlayStation has been killing 
killing it. You know, this is a company that obviously uh, locked in all kinds of great exclusives for itself. This year, we're going to see and probably be able to play uh, The Last of Us 2. That's my big one. Yeah. That's the one I really want to see. Which I, th I think is going to be incredibly exciting. I, I also feel like what they've been doing is kind of uh, uh, sh showing us what is sort of next in the hopper for Naughty Dog, and I wouldn't mind getting a taste of what they've got post The right. Last of Us. Absolutely. Even if it's not something that's going to come out in 2019, maybe it's a 2020 game. Just a little peek in there, seeing what else they got in the, you know, yeah. coming but, out. But um, my, my, one of my big ones, is I want to see finally Final Fantasy VII. The remake. I want to yeah. see the remake, <laughs> and I want to see a release date. Finally. Do you I, have faith in that? I feel like you know it's, I, there's I, been so many stops and starts with this thing. I'm. Ha Do you know what? I gotta have a little faith. Yeah. I'll play the game if it sucks. Then we all, all know it sucks. But yeah. I have a bit of faith it's gonna be good. And Resident Evil 2, the remake, is another huge game. Sure. I'm all about the remakes, it seems. I yeah. love the games in the past from my childhood. I want to see those all again. Well, Shadow of the Colossus Rebuilt is kind of great. set. Yeah, and it's set the bar, right? So if yeah. people are looking to uh, get into that space with a remake, they Re got to have to look at that. Yeah, yeah they got to look at that. I would love to see uh, another portable strategy from PlayStation in response to what Nintendo has done with Switch. I don't really? think we're going to do that. I think that, uh, you know. After Vita, I love Vita, but I, it wasn't I know, very successful. Didn't, so didn't I can't succeed. see them going PSP that PSP didn't go as far yes. as they want. And I've, I've honestly been thinking about the, uh, you know, the, the, the sort of proprietary media choices that Sony has kept making with their machines. Absolutely. Terrible idea. Yep. It's sort of shoehorned them. And, it, you know, you look at a UMD for the PSP compared to a cartridge for the Game Boy Advance, you have a pretty good idea that you'll be able to find something that will play that Game Boy Advance. <laughs> cartridge most of your PSPs will be dead or the batteries will be oh dead or they'll be my hard to find. great UMD movie collection will yeah. be put in the closet what's happening uh, but I feel like we have moved uh, you know beyond the media and it's all really about storage and hard hard drives and, and SD cards and stuff so, so you want to come and see them do it like a switch thing I would love to see a portable I, real yeah. PlayStation 4 I mean there's nowhere else for them to go with this hardware with this current PS4 hardware no. than to allow you to take that exact game experience experience they, anywhere hey, with you. I mean, Nintendo's yeah. proving that it's a successful it business. Is, yeah. Sony should do it. I don't think they will. Uh, okay. They don't need to because they've got VR. Do, I don't want them to do any portable stuff. It's been kind of a bit of a failure for them. The yeah. best, even though I've loved it. Yeah. What I want to see is them supporting stuff they've already got right now. With VR. You know, yeah, with VR. Yeah. And that's the number one thing I want to see. They have not, last E3 was a major disappointment. Yeah. The VR releases. Yeah. What things that they're showing? Well, I think, so, you know, the reality hit the VR developers out there. The install base for all of these platforms is still growing and it's still an emerging market, but it's not exploding and there isn't a huge install base out there so they have to kind of scale back but one thing that clearly needs to be made is an X-Wing versus TIE Fighter Star Wars we, well, space we, we combat thing. We both love that game, yeah. It would be so amazing and you know what, what a lot of developers are doing right now and this is what I really want to see if we're talking VR this is the thing right here uh, but a lot of developers are making that VR capable so it's like Wipeout, right? You can play it in VR but you can also play it. Regular. That, that's what they should do with this. They should make a space combat Star Wars game with yeah. some Rogue Squadron single player missions. That would be huge for the platform. Now, I think really what Sony needs to do is get a really good Japanese licensed JRPG yeah. in VR okay. with your friends. But that's I mean, that's like a niche of a niche, though. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> you know what? The niche people love this. Sure, stuff. sure. You know what? A dungeon exploring game like Fantasy Store or something yep. like that in VR. Yep. Yes, I know. I can't let go of the past. But I think there's a market there. They don't have any great RPGs in the machine. Never mind just JRPGs, just I, RPGs in general. I hear you. I mean, I, like the the idea of VR sort of choice is really attractive to people that have the machine. What about a baseball machine. simulator VR game? You yeah, know, it should be in there. You're hitting yeah. your dog with the, the fake bat by <laughs> accident. I think that would be great for sure. But I I truly believe that the medium, the VR medium, needs some really high profile. You know, vastly marketed. The Last of Us VR. You they, thinking they something needs, like that? Yeah, they need mm. like you know. It, I think it was a huge deal to bring Doom and Skyrim and Fallout to VR. I think all of that was great. But it didn't push it too forward enough. I though. know we need Star Wars, we need Marvel, we need the mega brands. We need more to, stuff. We yeah. just need more VR games. Yes. absolutely for sure. Okay, so those are my predictions and my hopes for Sony. And the one that I'll go on the limb for is I think we're we're probably going to get a taste of what PS5 technology. I think they're going to hint offer. at it. 
you like, know? It's going to be really weird because they don't want to announce it. Because yeah. then all some PS4 is theoretically dead yeah. in that regard. Where all, everybody's looking towards the na- latest technology coming out. Yeah. I really hope not. I want more PS4 games. I'm not ready oh, for they're next coming. gen yet. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, PS- I don't want P- PS5 PS4 yet. Pro is still pretty you know, current. And you, you know, clearly there's more God of War to come with DLC and stuff. But maybe they do, well, here's God of War uh, on a potential PlayStation 5 piece of tech. Right. You know, to here's give you Persona a, Six. Yeah, here's Something what it could look appetite. like if you got into that. Oh my God! Wouldn't that be amazing? The, the big Mario demo. I'm just I'm joking about <laughs> a thousand Mario. It's like a two billion, you know, Nathan Drake's running around or yes. something. I don't know. It's funny, but uh, I'm not ready for that. What do you want to see from Xbox? This is a huge one. I was thinking about. It. I'm like. Wait, yeah. what games are really coming out? What am well, I, I think we're going to get Halo 6. I think we're you, getting yeah, it do you think? in 2018. I think we're going to see it. I think it's going to be on the floor. It's going to yeah. take over. Xbox needs a uh, home run. They really do. This they is their year. They need more games. They need yeah. more games. But they also need, because they, they keep, you know, getting cool things like PUBG, and they got the Sea of Thieves out there, and the Forza games are doing well, and Gears 4 was fantastic. But they need a home run. They need I know. something massive. I know. And Halo I, 6 should be massive, and it should be unique what i want out of that game is i don't want to play any peripheral characters i just want to play as master chief master chief and, all the way and i, I want to feel 100 percent connected to this story and to this person and to this character and yeah. i want to really my problem i'm the biggest halo game. fan in the world yeah and over the years i've become less of a halo yeah. fan I especially after playing the last one i'm like i don't know if i'm into halo then i kind of went into destiny yeah you well, know that kind of replaced it for me a lot of people did and i think one of the issues is they kind of sonic the hedgehog halo out a little bit you know they yeah. threw in all these other peripheral characters I know. Interesting, but weird aliens, but not that interesting. But we're not Master Chief, and I, I feel like like plumb the depths of this guy before you sort of throw it. It's the same thing that happened to Metal Gear Solid 2 when we're playing Raiden all of a oh, sudden. Yeah, yeah, and we want to be Solid Snake, <laughs> you know. Absolutely. I think it's the same. Vengeance. It's yeah. the same deal with this. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so for Xbox, I think all we want is more games. I yeah. want to see more third parties. I right. want to see more people in there. I want to see them saying, "We bought this company. We did this. We've done this behind the scenes." Well, I we th- have this exclusive Star Wars game. I th- Exclusivity. I know. We need more of that. Exclusivity, 100%. I think we're going to see... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure we'll be playing Forza Horizon 4 <laughs> no, this what, year. Ben Halo? I yeah, can't believe I, it. Big shock. And yeah. I think we might see Gears 5. I think we might see a taste of it, <laughs> but it'll be out in 2019. I want more variety. But here's what I want yeah. Xbox to do. I want them to announce some kind of partnership with Steam some kind of ability because the hardware on the Xbox One X especially is uh, capable of you know being a pretty solid PC replacement there's already lots of connectivity and lots of back and forth with software that would push it over the edge yeah. and that would make people go holy crap if you could take your steam you know, log in and some of your games, and they got because I don't know if the Xbox would be able to handle everything on the. I think it probably would, it's but some kind of a par- now, yeah, yeah, some kind of a partnership there would be enormous and maybe not as great for Steam as it would be for Xbox, but yeah. Microsoft has the capital to do something that massive. Yeah, I'm not an Xbox hater. I, I love Xbox, yeah. in fact. I love the brand. I love what they were able to do on the 360. Yep. I want to see them see their glory days again yeah. and get some more games. That's well, all I something want. like That's that a, would do it. That would be a really great idea I, I mean, as well. the Steam box has died, so yeah. why not you know, take that idea and make it the Xbox? Absolutely. You know, that would be huge. Now we get to the big N. I've never heard of this company before. Have you heard of them? <laughs> They're called Nintendo. Yes. They came out with a small uh, device called the Switch last year. It is a small device. A small device. That but kind mighty. Of, but mighty. Blew everybody's expectations. Yeah. Became a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. And most people that I know really enjoy the Switch. It's an amazing machine, and it also kind of points to the idea of... Uh, uh, like a Swiss army knife kind of system, you know, yeah. that can do many things, which is something that I want to see Sony and Microsoft both do with their platforms as well, in terms of taking your games in other places, you know? Well, absolutely. I would like that, but I think Switch is doing it the best right now. They are. For sure. And, so let's talk about them. And I feel like we know the big three that they're going to have, and if just if Metroid Prime 4 and Pokemon and, and Smash Brothers come out this year, that's all they need. That's all they really need. You know? I, and are they, do you know what the big thing is, is, are they going to show uh, Metroid Prime 4 and then say, yes, December release? It's this year for sure, 100%. Yeah. Uh, they, because we haven't seen anything yet. We just saw yeah. that logo, and that's like in the span of a year, boom, we get a game. It's going to be that far along? It's going to be playable on the floor as long with, uh, along with Smash Brothers and Pokemon, and they will own from there. And I still want more, though. I still want more out well, of the you know, Switch, the, the, especially because yeah. what was shown with Zelda and with Mario last year is that the system and Nintendo's capabilities, you know, they're just, they're 
endless. They're limitless. Absolutely blasting out. Unbelievable. And so I would love a new IP that's sort of more hardcore gamer friendly and I know they've got Bayonetta 3 coming out too and I can't wait for that but I feel like something else that that sort of you know like the Pikmin from years ago on the GameCube that was a very unique brand new yes, style of game yes. something unique that is an, uh, a close IP for them yep. a brand new star brand, brand new, new franchise thing. yeah I mean they've Absolutely. already done it with ARMS and they did it last gen with Splatoon but something else one other thing that's yeah. you know out of their quiver that is just like incredible and revolutionary and you know I'm always looking for something like that but yeah. I always want the old staples I know. I want the Fire Emblem. I know it was supposed to come out in 2019. Yeah. I like Fire Emblem. I'd love a return to Advance Wars. I loved Advance That'd Wars. Be that was such a great strategy. I game. want Star Fox back, but like a real Star, a real Fox, Star Fox that that really yeah. harkens back to the uh, the Super Nintendo game and the N64 game. Yeah. And isn't a remake and gives us tons of content and a, and a tremendous amount of value. Yeah. And you know maybe you can system link without everybody having to own the game and great. getting some dogfights with other people on on Switch. Yeah, I mean, that would be amazing. And, and the big one that I really want, I really, really, I can't believe I'm a 44-year-old man yeah. asking for this. Yeah. I want Animal Crossing again. Okay. That's the perfect yeah. game yeah. for console Dude. and handheld to take anywhere and do anything. I know that's I coming. I can't wait for and that. If, and if they have... If they have Animal Crossing, Pokemon, no, Smash Brothers, and Metroid this year, it's too much. Boom! It, it That's be, another atom bomb from Nintendo. Well, and then, and, and, you know, and I, that could happen. We kind of need something like that because yeah. it's been a bit of a drought. Yeah. We got a few ports, like you know, Tropical Freeze right now is out. Yeah. Yeah. Great game. Yeah. But we kind of been there, done that before. Exactly. And uh, and then obviously, obviously, we got the tennis. Uh, Mario Aces is coming up. Yeah, and the That's Yoshi game. Fun, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we need some big hits uh, and Christmas is when they do the big hits yeah. but will we see here's the question and I don't think we're going to get it this year yeah. uh, a Switch Pro I don't think so not this year well I think they're doing some quiet revisions right now because of the hack on the hardware heard about that too so yeah. I, I, I don't I don't think so I think that one year is too soon but I think by E3 2019 yes because all the other machines are going to be in full on 4K mode and it'll be 4K 60 frames a second and resolutions and graphics like we've never seen before very soon from Sony and Xbox so Nintendo's going to have to counter that with something. You think so? They yeah. always pretty good in their little groove. They always stick in their groove they, way too long. It, you know that Yeah too. and it won't have to be you know like a techni technical parody but it will just be an improvement for people that want that. You know? I would love that. With, that would with be amazing. full on backwards compatibility I think Xbox has done a phenomenal job really proving the point how important backwards compatibility is and I think think if Nintendo upgrades their hardware, they will absolutely let you play the, the you, old Switch stuff. Do you think we'll get a Breath of the Wild 4K one day? Yes, I it's do. It's possible, yeah, isn't it? That absolutely. Would be, but my God, that, that's a few years away. I can't, I, I can't see them going to 4K for a I'm long sure time. I'm sure it was all crafted in 4K because all the hardware is there out there right now. And it's just been down resed and, yeah, of and, course. and uh, compressed to be able to be put onto this hardware. Yeah, sure. I, be, I, I hadn't even thought about that. A 4K Breath of the Wild yeah. one day. That's a small tier. But let's talk a little bit about the games that aren't the exclusives that are uh, you know, from third-party like developers. Bethesda, for say. Bethesda or Electronic what are you excited about? Well, you know, from Bethesda, the one thing that I think most of us would love to see is another Elder Scroll game. Yep. It's been a little bit of time now. I don't think like they're going to do that. They've they've got another IP that's called Starfield that they've been uh, that there's been you know is some like deep a, dives. And in. I don't know about this. Is this like an RPG? Yeah, it's another. Uh, there's actually a bunch of action RPGs in the sci-fi world yeah. that we're going to, I think, find out a lot about. Anthem, we already know from Bioware. Yeah, that's a big one I was going to mention as I well. Think, I love, I, I think can't wait for Anthem. I can't wait. We're going to be playing it on the show floor. It's going to be a huge game. It doesn't come out until next year, though, 2019. Course, yeah, but yeah. I think, I think, Just to uh, see it. it's great. Yeah, yeah. EA is going to be guns blazing, no pun intended, with that. And Bioware is going to say, look, Mass Effect was an anomaly. We're fixing all of, yeah, I think it's going to be amazing. But I also feel like this Starfield thing, it, it's just like a trademark deal that They've is it kind of like a Fallout sci-fi version I, of something like that? I, that would be amazing. I'd maybe love it's that. I'd love maybe it's that. a Fallout variation. Maybe it's a Fallout, but I feel like Starfield is this thing, this buzz thing Thanks that's been question. around Bethesda. That that's what we're going to see. So maybe like Elder Scrolls for next-gen systems. Yes, but Probably. it'll be a new IP, a brand new game. Yeah. I think from from Bethesda. Yeah. I also, obviously, we're going to be playing uh, and finding out a lot more about Cyberpunk 2077 from that, the Witcher I keep developers. Like you can push back or push back or push back. It, it's way bigger than The Witcher 3 yes. from CD Projekt Red, and it's going to be massive this and incredible. This development is unbelievable. Yep. Behind the scenes, I bet they got something really amazing cooking. I this. am fired up for that, and also Borderlands 3 is going to be coming as well. Yeah, I'm not a, I, I like the games. I'm not like oh 
oh my god, I'm gonna lose my mind. But I did enjoy playing them with my friends back in the day. The hunting and all that kinds of stuff was what, a lot of fun. And you know, they made uh, Gearbox a ton of money. So what they've done is they've gone back and sort of, you know, prepared for this next generation of machines. And it should be insane. It should yeah. be incredible. I'm super psyched about that. But if I have to pick the thing that I'm most curious about, I'm most excited for, is to find out what Rocksteady has been uh, working on the, the Arkham guys because they've disappeared. <laughs> They said oh, your favorite development ba ba Batman Arkham Knight was going to be their last Batman thing. So speculation has been that they might be coming back with uh, a Justice League game. And my mind boggles at the idea no. of a Justice League game set in the Arkham universe with that fidelity. A and like a, maybe a, like an action RPG. You can level up the characters. Yeah, play with, with your, all of those. Co-op with your friends would be amazing. Dude, I, like, be they, cool. they just went... They had this small little idea with Asylum, which was all sort of based in one building kind of thing. It's a great game. Incredible. Then they gave us a whole city. Then they gave us a whole city and the Batmobile. This is a team that has just, you know, blown past expectations. This is going to be called Batman World. Well, that's what Justice League would have to be, it you know? A very, a very open world Interstellar. Game. I mean, and, but the, the counter to that is we're going to see the Ar Avengers game that yeah. Crystal Dynamics and, and uh, Eidos Montreal have been working on. I can't freaking wait. Like we're We gonna... haven't seen anything of that either, which and, is amazing. And we're getting the Spider-Man game, so finally superheroes are going to enter this and generation. That's the thing, that's the thing you know? going back to Sony, we're going to get Spider-Man this Christmas. It's got to yep. come out this Christmas. It's in it's September. September? Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I have it on my calendar, yeah. all the list of games, and it's like, oh, yeah. Yes, Spider-Man. Yeah. I did remember putting that yeah, on. Yeah, no, sure. that, that is going to be amazing. And we can't forget our friends at Ubisoft. Yeah. They had a very tear-filled uh, press conference oh, last yes. year. Oh, yes, yes, yes. There's a lot of tears had, a lot of amazing games, a very family-run company. It has yep. that kind of feeling. Beyond Good and Evil 2, mm -hmm. they showed they showed a lot of uh, demo stuff, a lot of stuff behind the scenes, but now we're going to see gameplay. Is it real, yeah. Yeah, is it real? Is this? Are we really getting it this year or next year? I'm psyched for that too. And if there's a couple others that I would pull out, and these are like, because we're talking about what we hope will happen yeah, in E3. Yeah, we're having a bit of fun. Burnout and SSX have both been back wow. in the sort of public mind share because you can play SSX 3 on Xbox One, and Burnout has the, uh, the Paradise Remastered games. Uh, for PlayStation or for Xbox, incredible. Yeah, and they're both they're so classics, worth yeah. getting and playing now. Those old games, sort of redone. But God, it was it, like this is the perfect time for EA to come out with a new SSX story yeah. or a new Burnout story. These are now, beloved brands that are why been do you think fully they let them squandered. Go? Did they, I think they, it was oversaturation. There was so many of those yeah. style of games yes. that it kind of burnt it all out. Yeah, and now them. and now the, a lot of the industry has moved to like let's build a game that's that's sort of keeps people engaged forever and ever and we're gonna see you'll notice that Johnny and I did not mention it we hope there's lots of battle royale games because we don't give a crap about that no, but yeah, I'm fine with that. but there you know I'm, we're gonna get them but yeah, I, I, okay, I want yeah I want to see SSX come back in a really massive majestic way and some same of with those burnout. 90s and two, early 2000s yes. make us like a beautiful return I would love yeah, to see some of those as well the business has shifted they want you to keep you locked into their game forever and they want to sell you little pieces of content DLC expansion yes. buy this character buy this level yeah and absolutely well, the one other game I, off the top of my head I don't want to forget about the new Ace Combat yeah I can't wait to wow. see that by that's Bandai. out of nowhere sorry <laughs> I was just like I can't forget this Bandai Namco yes I love these oh, guys dude Soul Calibur 6 well, and oh that my as well God, yeah, yes. you know what if you yes. said to me a bunch of years ago there's another Soul Calibur game I'd be yeah. like no I'm not yeah. interested because we got oversaturated on those games yeah. the timing is perfect for a brand new Soul Calibur on this hardware today and Mortal Kombat 11 as well is going to be good this is this is going to be an oh, and Death Stranding from oh, that oh another God, PlayStation Kijima. exclusive. K I should yeah. have worn my goddamn uh, Kojima production shirt for th that one. This is going to be an epic E3, and this was just a little taste. Small both, taste. both Johnny and and I are going to be talking a lot about what's coming up at sure. E3 and a lot more speculation. We'd love love to hear your thoughts. Uh, yeah, too. exactly. Yeah. Let us know down below. What are you expecting? What would you like to see? Yep. The dreams? Will we get a new Star Tropics on the on yeah. the Nintendo <laughs> Switch? Absolutely not. Will we get another Mother? Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely not but we can dream we for can sure. we can dream yes so, that was fun buddy yeah absolutely anyways guys until next time
Excited yet? E3 is going to be so incredible and I can't wait and we're going to have a lot of reporting um, leading up to it. We're going to be doing live streams of all the press conferences again this year and Blake and I are going down to meet up with Jose and probably Ben and Steve and um, who knows Scott Jones, Marissa. Uh, they Everybody's converging so we'll get as many familiar faces on our program as we possibly can while we're at E3. I can't wait for that and stay tuned to lots more uh, you know, EP episode, EP live episodes and our rundowns for uh, many more E3 announcements. But right now, let's take a look at a game that uh, has made its way to the Switch. Finally, it's called Shantae, uh, Half Genie Hero Ultimate Edition. Exceed sent me a code yesterday. I've been looking forward to playing this game. Um, I've said this before about the Switch, but it is an amazing platform for uh, 2D scrolling experiences. Most recently, I had a blast playing Donkey Kong Country uh, Tropical Freeze. Uh, but I've always had a soft spot in my heart, too, for Way Forward and some of those folks who's the developer here, some of those folks went on to make the, the, the uh, Shovel Knight game. So let's, uh, let's play and chat over uh, Shantae, Hi, ha Half Genie Hero. Blake Seifkin is here to uh, help us with the chat and also to um, you guys let us know how this all looks and sounds, okay? Uh, so let's jump right in and hopefully it sounds okay. I'm going to pop the, uh, the headphones in so I can hear it. And... Um, I'm going to do my best to pay attention to the game. And just since we went live, uh, Bethesda and id basically confirmed the new Rage game. Yeah. That we talked about earlier. Yeah. From Walmart Canada. Walmart yeah. Canada for the exclusives yeah. today. Woo! Stealing the thunder from Jeff Keighley. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Keighley is like, going to get a job Walmart at Walmart Canada. Canada. <laughs> a Walmart oh. Canada exclusive. <laughs> They're getting lots of good press at Walmart right now. I'm sure people are like, oh, I can buy games at Walmart. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, Whoa. That's, what, not your, that's not your phone? Oh, it could be. Ooh. Oh, it's the emergency alert. This is a test of the... Thanks, British BC Columbia, government. British Columbia emergency <laughs> alert thing. They're making sure that we can get this. At least it's a test and not a... Whew. Okay, that worked and that was scary. <laughs> All right, so here we are. It, the, the entire province just jumped right now. In a, yes, like what is that thing? I guess it's good we have one. Yes. If North Korea or someone decides to do something. Oh, come on. <laughs> we're not in that space right now. Right now we're in happy space. We're happy gaming space? Yeah, happy side-scrolling platforming a Anyone in BC, space. let us know if you just got the uh, BC government alert on your phone and if it freaked you out. So this is the ultimate edition of the game. It includes the main story game, and it includes DLC and extra add-on content. You can play the, the pirate version. I Literally playing this for the very first time in here. We've featured Shantae games in the past on the show, and I have not really been the one that's reviewed them, though. Yeah, I've so, never been a big fan of this franchise. When did it start? Is it an, uh, How old is it? I think oh, the, uh, the Game Boy Color. Oh, let's move the cursor out of yeah. there. So let us know how everything looks and sounds. Music can't be separated from the audio, so um, you're going to be hearing the music soundtrack in there as well. Question oh, from Leafs fan. Oh, asleep. Yeah. Leafs fan has a question. Which Japanese RPG do you think Microsoft will announce at E3? Oh, I boy. I think that's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> they have announced them before. They just, you know, they've had... Is it some success? Yeah, it wasn't but the Xbox? Um, hasn't the Xbox One sold like five copies in Japan? But they worked really hard on the 360 at least to work with uh, with uh, Japanese companies to create yeah. RPGs and stuff. But they still didn't sell systems. In I, Japan. I, one of them was um, oh, I forget the name of it. I forget that it was like uh, Eternal Searching or something. It's some <laughs> weird name. That, <laughs> that sounds like the name of a Japanese RPG. Yeah. Yeah, what, what was that dragon game that they canceled? Dragon, was, was it Lost dragon, Odyssey? Dragon Stone. La, la, and, oh, a, and there was the blue blue dragon game? No, there, but there was the one they canceled. And I think, didn't you play it at E3 a couple of years ago? Uh, oh, yeah, that was the, um, that was... Dragon Scale. Yeah, and that was yeah. um, Platinum. So that, that really sucked, but Platinum's been able to do all kinds of other deals since Oh, then. Eternal Sonata is the game you're thinking Eternal of. Eternal Sonata, The chat yeah. has come okay. through for us. Thank you. And Lost Odyssey. Lost Odyssey, and there was another one, Blue Dragon or something like that. <laughs> that, that was a, an Xbox exclusive. I can't do anything right now. I have no, I, get, I can just jump. Okay. What is this place? Does Uncle even know what's down here? I think all the art has been um, improved for this Ultimate Edition. 
Danny Dolphin says he also got the uh, BC government alert just now. Okay, all right, so it's not just so us. It's not just us. Anything can happen on a live stream, man. It's awesome. Question from Timberwolf. Has Nintendo already won E3? Uh, I mean, they've confirmed that they're going to have Smash Brothers there, so that pretty much wins E3, I think. Smash and Pokemon will likely be there in Metroid Prime. That's what Johnny and I were saying. Uh, well, yeah. Smash is definitely going to be there, yeah. Yeah, and so if Pokemon and Metroid Prime 4 are there... As well, yeah. That's pretty... Not that That's E3. in the winning sort of tier, unless, for sure. Unless Microsoft announces that they bought Valve and announces Half-Life 3 at the same, oh on the God. same stage, then then Nintendo's gonna win. Oh my goodness. Yeah, because Sony's big titles, there there's still a few dropping, but they've started to hit, you know? Like, we're, we'll have the Detroit Become Human, we got God of War, we know Spider-Man is not too soon after, not too long after E3, would I like to say the game, yes. Um, and we know that Last of Us 2 is coming, so they may they may still have a few up their sleeve that are really shocking and, and surprising. Who, Sony? Yeah, for the yeah, PlayStation maybe 4. Yeah, Horizon 2. I think that's a PS5 game. Yeah, it, it'll. It, we'll, we're definitely going to see some really cool DLC for oh, we're gonna, God of War. We'll, get, we'll see that Samurai game that. Um, oh yeah, Sucker that one Punch looks good. Yeah, on. yeah. I forget the name of it. Okay, so this is the workshop. Good morning, Uncle. Uh huh. I had the weirdest dream. Can you tell me? Oh, I was dreaming. Uh, sure, this is something to do with your new invention. You'll see. Mechanical part on back order. Emilio Lopez, will will Nintendo have a booth that has more than just one game is the big question. Well, if you... Anyone who's been to E3 knows, like, it makes sense for Nintendo to have an entire booth devoted to one game because their lineup is huge. And everybody wants to play that one game, so... Yeah, if they have... If Smash is playable on the show floor... And I believe Metroid Prime 4 is coming out this year, and I believe they'll, it, it will be playable at E3. That's my my belief. I, I, I don't know anything more than I that. Think, I think they're going to definitely have Smash play. Well, they've said they're going to have Smash playable. Yeah, for sure. They're gonna have, but it'll also be playable on the show floor, I think. And if they do, that lineup is going to be down the block. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and Sam from um, Ars Technica had an interesting comment yesterday about the idea of... Uh, them also releasing Melee for the Switch. And then I, I don't know if I said it in the interview that I had with him, but what if they included that as part of the Smash Brothers game? They're what if it was that. built into the game? Nintendo's not going to do that. I don't know. No. What, 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 if, what if they... Why am I dancing in a bathroom? <laughs> you look away for one second. What's happening? Is that just because you're... Is that your idle animation? No. I was... I, I pressed a button and I ended up dancing in a bath for a little bit. Okay. So... I, oh, that... It, <laughs> when I press the X button, I dance, and the and the music, uh, and the everything changes in the environment for a second. Corey Kennedy is asking any word on Dragon Age Four. Well, Bioware has said they're making it. I don't know if we're. They gonna might tease it. Yeah, but they said it's like they said they're making it, but they've also said it's like two years away or more. So I don't know if we're going to see it at this E3. They might tease it because Anthem is on deck, right? I, I would I would expect that. Uh, Anthem is probably like a March 2019 Yeah, actually, I, we didn't put it in the news today, but uh, Andrew Wilson said it's out that fiscal quarter. Okay. So yeah, it'll be out around March 2019. Okay. I don't think we're going to see Dragon Age until after Anthem is out, though. I think it's too soon. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like, I, I, I don't think Dragon Age is going to be announced. Oh, they won't show they it. Won't, until... They won't announce it until, or, or unveil it. They've already technically announced it, but they won't show I, it off. I until... think if they say, here's the release date for Anthem, and here's what's next from Bioware, there's an opportunity. And actually show the game? Yeah, and maybe it's uh, maybe that's one of the games that's going to be next gen. You know, maybe that's a... Uh... They can't say next gen yet, though, because not until the console makers announce yeah. next gen. Oh, well, I remember they would tease with technology, and they would tease with little glimpses of what software though? would look like before we saw any hardware. Mm. I, I believe that we're going to start to see that. They always kind of follow the lead of the console makers, though. Yeah, but they work with them to kind of get people hyped on what's coming next. Maybe it's behind closed doors kind of stuff this year, but uh, I don't think we're that far away. I, I feel like I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do at all right now. Uh, you're supposed to win the Shake game. Shake those hips. Okay. So if I... <laughs> you're supposed to uh, dance for someone? Okay, I'm dancing. Okay. Looks like the art gallery is closed. Okay, so these are the... 
Will they be a this showing? Is the, this is like the hub that I'm in. Yeah, you're in the hub world, it looks like, like the village. Cool ocean breeze, but I think we're in for another hot one. Adrian Leon, will there be a showing of The Last Guardian in VR? Uh, the whole game in VR? Nah. Yeah. Are they even going to do that? Is no, that, it was yeah. just a tease. Of... I don't think they're going to. Oh, yeah, they made that, that goofy little... I, I uh, played it. It was pretty cool. Yeah. But, but the, yeah, they're not going to do the whole game in VR. Okay, what is this? Visit the item shop for customizing. I've got 15 gems. Shake those hips, okay. Will Final Fantasy VII show gameplay or get a release date? Final Fantasy VII came out in like 1998, bud. <laughs> no, that's what John was talking about, the remake. Yeah, no. Yeah, we'll probably see something new for that. Square Enix is going to have a, um, not a live press conference, but a, a video stream presentation, similar to what Nintendo does. So we probably will see something new about Final Fantasy VII. And probably new... Stuck to the box of hard drives. Okay, I got a magnet. So now I go back to the, to the old guy. Okay, and he's going to go build me something. Okay, I was zipping past. This is what happens. I get caught up in the conversation. So I'm going to go back to the old guy, and he's going to build me something. I have a question from MJFV1. Okay. FV0 taken. Uh, honest odds on Kingdom Hearts 3 possibly coming this year. Oh, I think I think it's happening. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. Is so, it going to have Star Wars and Marvel stuff in it? Uh, that's a good question. I doubt it. Or will it come out after Fox, and they'll have all the Fox characters in it? I doubt it will have the Star Wars and Marvel stuff in it. Disney wants to, I think, silo the marketing push on their characters. They don't want to just make it all super, except for their own Disney Infinity uh, uh, experiment. Oh, so now I see what you're saying, yeah. That makes sense. Uh, there would be we so gonna... many stakeholders that, were, that would be, uh, I don't know what the frack I'm supposed to do right now. <laughs> <laughs> just running around in a circle. Art gallery, okay, workshop, who's this How lady? did you get here? Okay, I shake those hips, yes. Visit the item shop, I did that. I don't need to save the game, okay? I'm saving the game again. Now where do I go? What you do I do? Going, you can't, like, walk that way? I can't go way? anywhere in there, no. Uh, did I've you been shake your hips house. I've shaked my everyone? hips, I've talked to this guy. I've gone into the hatchery. What Did you shake you your hips me? in the hatchery? The ocean, uh, no, I don't think I'm supposed to do that. Have you seen Bolo? Try the bath, bathhouse. Okay, so now we go back to the bathhouse. Okay. Shake your hips in the bathhouse? I did that, yeah. I was in the, I was in the, oh, that's a workshop. Oh, okay. So the old guy, I, I see, I did what I was supposed to do. Okay, there's the <laughs> magnet. Okay, it's here, a magnet has finally arrived. That means it's time to show off my latest invention. Here uh, we go. Fumier, we or Fer Fermier, we talked about the Comcast potentially buying Fox situation yesterday in the rundown. Yep. Uh, yeah. You, what, what was your verdict on that? You think that it's going to be I, a bidding I think, war? I think Disney. I think this is a a bidding war, and I think they both want it for obviously the uh, media exploitation rights, but also they'll be incredibly important to their theme parks and their merchandising, and so it will be a bidding war. They have. Amazing properties that are, that are more important, frankly, to Disney than they are to Comcast. I have a good one here from Patrick Furtado. Yeah. Do you think we'll see anything about Darksiders 3? That's a good question because THQ Nordic is yeah. European, right? I think we will see Darksiders 3. No, they didn't they say they're not going to E3 they, this year? They. Uh, I think THQ oh, Nordic, yeah. or maybe you it was some other big European. You know what? I saw some of the stuff on... on um, from THQ Nordic last year before E3. I think they said they're not coming to E3 this year. And I th I believe that that was delayed. Yeah. Uh, Darksiders 3. I yeah. believe that it was it was in full steam ahead and then they delayed it, but I, I think it's still coming. It'll probably be, we'll if they announce something. it, it'll probably, they would probably want to do it at Gamescom, right? Or a mm. big European event, wouldn't they? I, I would Maybe. guess, right? Okay, the pirates are coming. I'm pretty sure they're not coming to E3 this year though, so I would guess against that one. Okay. I don't know how well the remastered versions of uh, 1 and 2 sold. Uh, Vic, do you... Uh, he, uh, Hussein 248, 247 was taken, mm -hmm. asks, uh, for nostalgia's sake, how old were you when Judgment Day first started airing on G4? How old was I when yeah. Judgment Day first started airing on G4? That was in 2002. So you're 25 now. Yeah, I was 7. 7 years old. 
<laughs> the math is all wrong on there. Uh, I was in my 30s. <laughs> it's a good way to phrase it. Yeah. Uh, or 60s. I could have been in my 60s. Could have been, yeah. yeah. It was in that gap, in that space. Oh, that guy walking around in the background is okay, new. Okay, this is why every town employs a guardian genie just in case. Okay. Oh, it's on fire now. Yeah, I know. That's the different. pirates have attacked, but I still don't know where to go. This Can is, you not go through that? I cannot. You can't, like... I can't go there, no. This is very obtuse beginning to... Again, to it's a, bad conveyance. To a... You can't a 2D walk, scrolling You can't game. walk behind you at all in any direction? No. No. I guess I can go to the hatchery and see what's going on in here. And she's going to say, have you seen Bolo? <laughs> Sky. Uh, I'll give you a ride, but none of my birds is big enough. That is unless, unless what? Wrench, I need you. Okay, here we go. I feel like the characters are oddly sexualized. I dig them. I like them. I got the whistle. Now I can get on Wrench. Go! I love the art in this. I think it's super cool. Yeah, but the character designs, they all, they all have their midriff exposed, but they all have, like, shadows on the crotch, too. Okay. So it's, all like, right. it's like, psychologically, it's trying to make you look there. You think? I don't know. I might just be conspiratorial. <laughs> well, I mean, we don't normally get female leads, that's you know, true, yeah. period, in the in video games like this. So yeah. I think that's the, that's the uniqueness of it, right? Corey Kennedy, do you think we'll see the new Tomb Raider game at... E3, of course. Yeah. We've already played the new Tomb Raider game. Yep. We played the first... Comes out in uh, September. We played like an hour of it each. It's pretty good. And yeah, they're definitely going to have it at E3. Okay. This is a lot of, you know, exposition yeah, before we get right to the, the game. This is, I'm getting know? flashbacks to a way out. Yeah. Like, let's just let just, me play the game. Let's just go. Will we hear about an N64 Mini at E3? Mm. Well, that would make sense, so probably not. Yeah. Usually with Nintendo, it's like, does it make sense? Yes, then they probably won't do it. Okay, so here is the game. We're finally at the point where we can do it. So I use my tail, my hair whip. <laughs> which, it was the Will, it was the, um, Will Smith kid, right? That, In what? That, that has the... Uh, Whip my head or whatever. I forget how the song goes. I don't know what the song. His kid is. I forget what's his kid. Uh, no, Jaden. No, Pinkett it's not Smith? the. It's the um, the girl Will Smith kid. But okay. she's got a uh, whip, Willow Smith. Yeah, Willow Smith. Whip my hair. Or something I'm kind like of ashamed that. that I actually knew her name. There you go. That's good. <laughs> you gotta go up on those planks. Oh, okay, there. right. I'm glad I can. I can swim though. That's good. Okay, come on up. You go. Oh, come on. Get in there. There Nobody's complaining about audio. We're all good. Uh, oh, no one has yet. Okay, good. Okay, here we go. There we go. Feeling the groove. Okay. Oh, we're gonna see new Labo stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe they could make like um, Labo themed things based on other games, like a Link Labo or a Mario Mario that, Labo. That would be cool. I saw this unofficial uh, Labo arcade cabinet thing where you put the switch in and then. You, you hooked up the two uh, Joy-Con to make them look like uh, uh, two separate arcade sticks, and they look great. Can you not move that? Uh... Oh, probably yes. Thank you. No. Oh, there you go. Smack with your hair. That's wood. bad conveyance too, because how did you know it wasn't going to break when you hit it with your hair? Usually it would, right? Yeah, because everything else breaks when you hit, your, hit it with your it's hair. It's okay. It's okay. Games all have their own language. You have to learn it every time. I bet you there's a secret if you go up there onto that one, and then uh, probably mm -hmm. not. I don't have a double jump yet, and I'm waiting for that. <clears throat> I'm used to my Funky Kong moves. Yeah, that's always a tricky when you're playing... Oh. When you play another game for so long, and then you jump into yes. another one. Yeah. I've been playing a lot of that and a lot of South Park. Game over. Hopefully we can go through that whole story bit again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Come on, Shantae! Show me what you got! Okay, we saw all this. Let's go. I got my whistle. Okay, let's go. Quit. Let's go. Let's go. Don't give me any more information. I just want to play. Stop. Stop with the things on the things. Just let's go. Thank you. That's crazy. Just press the button and go. You know what I'm saying? You guys know what I'm saying. I have a good comment here from Blair Farrell. Okay. I only played one Shantae game on the DSi. Yeah. And I got stuck and never went back, so I traded in my DSi for the 3DS. <laughs> <laughs> so Shantae is responsible for your upgrade, which is very cool. Lijo asking, 
uh, will there be a Logan cameo in Avengers 4? Definitely uh, not. Uh, if the Fox deal happens, definitely maybe. Definitely not. No, definitely not. Come on, maybe. Because it's not going to be done before then, and even if it is... It might be done before then. This, I, this is this is the big contest. This I would is, bet money to say definitely not. 100% no. Everybody's expecting it. No. So they won't do it. First of all, the deal has to be finished in a year for that to happen. And it's not. it might not be done in a year. It's such a big, complicated deal. It's worth, right. what is it worth, like $60 billion? Mm-hmm. So it's not going to be done anytime soon. The Department of Justice probably has to yeah, approve and it's, it. Yeah, it's and like, it's not like where they bought Lucasfilm or Marvel where they just bought the whole company. They're, they're buying bits and pieces of Fox here and there. Right. And then those pieces get spun off. It's but very Marvel big owns those characters, so I think that's the only potential on that. But and, what I, and there is a... But, but the, they can't have him in the movie until the, the Fox deal is totally done. Yeah. And the Fox deal is not going to be totally done in a year. If it even happens, because Comcast might screw it up, right? Right. Well, if it isn't done, there will certainly be some kind of a licensing situation. Let's say Comcast gets it. Comcast owns Universal, which owns uh, a stake in the Hulk and, and the Hulk's movie rights. Yep. So they would absolutely do something similar with uh Oh, X-Men. Like, ma- like license? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah like what yeah. Sony has just done, too. Yeah. However it plays out, it's going to be like we are going to see the MCU and the uh, and the X-Men together. Yeah, but I don't know if it's going to happen in Avengers 4. It'll take a bit longer than that, I think. Yeah. Oh, see, you got you could have got those be Oh, it responds. Yeah. It's just like reality. <laughs> 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 yeah, they're back again. That's great. Just it's just the way it is. Just like in reality. Yeah, when I break something, I just turn. Oh around. come on! Whenever I break anything, I turn around, walk a few paces away, and come back, and it's it's fixed. I think I have to play it off the monitor on the computer because there's a little bit of a delay. All right. I like these little pirate dudes. Uh, Lee Jones is saying he wants to bet me five bucks that. He'll well, be I in get, there? Yeah. I'm saying, yeah, I'll bet you five bucks he won't be in the movie. The the only other thing about that is that there is a an expiry date on when they could use Jackman, right? Unless they wanted to make him old man Logan. Yeah. They can only use but, him for... But would it be... So, would it be because if they tease him, they'll want him in more movies. Would it so. be Hugh Jackman, though? I bet you if they bring the... When they bring the characters in, it'll if they do, guy. it'll be all new actors. Yeah. With the exception of maybe Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool, but other than that, it'll if, be all new actors. If they're gonna, if they're gonna excite people about the combining of universes, it, it, I think it, it would have to be Jackman. Yeah, if it was Jackman, that would get the hugest, yeah. you know, applause ever. But yeah. I don't think it's gonna happen. And yes, I will take the bet. Five dollars says it will not happen. I want that to happen, and I want it'd be awesome. I, I want, don't get it I want wrong. Jackman to play him for until he's old man Logan. You know, he is I, old man Logan already. He's getting there, for and sure. I, did you see the new movie, Vic? He, he died in it. <laughs> yeah, but they aged him. They aged him up. He doesn't look quite that haggard. Oh, so they could make a movie set before in, but, that. Yeah, okay. yeah. Or they because they've and killed all the also, other. It was set in the future too. Yeah, and they've killed all the other characters before anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Do you think there will be a playable Division Two or just trailers? Uh... Playable. Yeah, what else would they have? Play- they have to have something playable. So I'm, yeah, I'm curious. What was the name of the spaceship game? That's what I'm super curious oh, about. Oh, uh, I, I we played it. I can't even remember what I, it's called. I can't remember any of it, or I'm, the I'm name. I'm googling of it, it now because uh, it's yeah. Has it been canceled? Starf. Because we haven't been. Uh, we haven't seen anything on that thing in a no, long time. No, it's coming. It's it, they can't cancel it. We'd have heard if it was canceled. Right. I remember asking but them about that. But it was supposed that. to come out this year. Like, no, it wasn't. The... No, when they announced it, they said 20... Yeah, I... It might still come out this year. But we haven't heard anything on it. Starlink Battle for Atlas. Yeah, that's not an easy thing to remember. That's kind of a lame title. Yeah. Just call it Starlink. But, no, I... Is it's that still, still around. coming? Yeah. The website's still up. Beyond Good and Evil 2 will be playable. You think? Yeah. 
Mm. They've been doing streams and stuff where they're sitting there playing it. I think I bet you it'll be playable. I think that's another year away. I bet play. you it's gonna. I think, I think it'll be cool it'll be playable trailer. behind closed doors. They they have said all of that. Maybe behind closed doors. Yeah, they have. They, they, they always have their booth where you can play shit, and then they have where the press goes. Yeah. And it's an exclusive area with free food and stuff. Come on, come and on. That's where you play the games. So I gotta go in here. Oh, okay. Get my timing down. Boom. Okay. Will Scott C. Jones be at E3? I think so. Is he going? I think so. He, he's consulting these days, so it, it, it's a little different role for him. Like, he's working directly with game makers to, uh, to help them with their games, which is a cool job. And he, he also does uh, some reporting on games for different outlets and stuff still a little bit, too. So I, I expect that he'll probably be there. I haven't seen him in ages. Haven't been to Toronto in ages. Come on! My Shantae skills are not very good. You see, you see it's good. shaking a bit before it comes out, so... Thanks, buddy. There you go. That's why you're here, Blake. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you could tell. <laughs> the pressure's on, man. Like, I don't want to suck for you guys, but... Ubisoft has been crushing it lately, says Lee Joes. Yeah, they've been doing a pretty good job yep. with their games recently. Can I get up there? Nope. Oh, shite. Samhain11111 one, one, one has a good comment. Ubisoft open worlds need to be toned down a little bit and mm. have more focused experiences. I completely agree with that. Mm -hmm. uh, Assassin's Creed Origins was way too big, the world. It's just this big war, and you didn't. You could finish the whole story. I, I got to the max level in that game, and I didn't even see half the map. Yeah. And I did all the main story missions and like all the side missions around them. Yeah, that's I a got problem. to the level cap, and I didn't see half the map in the game. It shouldn't feel daunting when you play a game like, no. oh shit, there's so much I gotta see. Like. Yeah. yeah, totally. That's an issue for sure. Far Cry Five best-selling game of 2018 so far. Is that true? I guess it would I, yeah, be, yeah. Because it's multiple systems. Yeah, yeah. Excellent game. Yeah. That and Origins, both excellent. Okay. It's so funny. It's like the uh, the two club goers <laughs> from Saturday Night Live. That's that's Shantae's move. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Will Ferrell and... Yeah. Uh, yeah. With, oh, here, here's one. Uh, uh, Fermier is asking, with the huge uh, No Man's Sky next update, mm -hmm. do you think the game should have just been released this year? Like, would it have been better if they uh, delayed it? And I think they just had too much hype around the, the core game. I think that it was an amazing indie game, but then there was too much expectation and, yeah. too, and too much... And if they had released it as, like, an early access thing... It would have been, yeah, a lot better. Or just an indie game and let us just discover it more than have it forced down our throats as the, the second coming, you know? That didn't do anybody any favors. And then to have, you know, publishers like like Sony went out there and said that uh, we don't know what they're doing. <laughs> you know, like they, they kind of washed their hands of those guys. Yeah, that was kind of bullshit when... Uh, but it was Shiro also Yoshida the arrogance of Hello Games, too. Also over-promising, too, right? They were... They full on believed their their farts, and they were, you know, they yeah. thought that they would they would deliver, and they did do something incredible, but people had every right to be upset. You got to do those two at the I same. Got to do them at the same time, yeah. You got to go right when it comes. I can't think and talk and sh play it. <laughs> ah, okay, go. Okay, here we go. You got to start jumping before now. it comes out. Now, 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 oi! Job. All right. Okay. You got the little the the things and everything. Yeah. What about someone's asking about Red Dead Redemption at E3? Oh, Rockstar yeah. doesn't really no, do E3. Yeah. yeah. The, it'll probably be. Actually, they won't. They're not going to want. They're not going to have it. They'll have big signs up for it, and it'll it'll play in the uh, in vids and things like yeah, that. Yeah, but that's not getting. Rockstar doesn't even have a booth. No. I... They never have anything at E3. Rockstar is very. There's there's Stanley Kubrick of game developers. They don't like they, to talk to people. They or... might want a best of E3 award, so they might let critics play it. Yeah, the take two, like not the booth, but the the meeting room will probably have like a thing maybe. Yeah. yeah. The 
Yeah, they're 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 Stanley Kubrick and Terrence Malick. Like they don't talk to people. And I, yeah, I also I think that they probably just want everybody to experience the game yeah. right from the beginning. They're the as opposite well. of uh, Hello yeah. Games. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Hello Games learned a lot. They were, I mean, super humble, super talented people, and I don't, I don't think they lost that. They just lost yeah, their no, way I, with the I'm story. Not, I'm not on, saying they're arrogant. It's just they're, it's, it's probably a lack of arrogance because they don't want to oversell themselves. Well, right? if somebody tells you your game is incredible, it's going to be the best thing ever, over and over and it gets over. Gets your again, head. Yeah. You probably start believing that, you know. Yeah. And they do make the best games ever. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> Rockstar. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but I'm thinking with. Oh, I was, games. Thinking, I was thinking Rockstar, sorry. Yeah. Uh, do you think there, uh, MJFB1, do you think there will be, there's a danger of E3 being too third party heavy for Xbox? Mm. Well, like, what third parties? What are you talking about? <laughs> well, it's a great third party machine. Yeah, but. Mm. Uh, there's, I mean, the third party support is right there. That's, that's a given. And the X is actually an amazing third-party option. I guess, But yeah. what we need is exclusives that make the X make sense. Yeah. Or no, that's true. That's true. Okay, we're at a boss fight already. This giant frog with three eyes. That's a cool-looking design. Dead. Okay, just like I planned. Here we go. It's kind of annoying. Next time a text thing comes up, you notice how, like, the character mod, the, the 2D pictures of them are cut off on a straight line? Mm. That's kind of weird. That feels like, yeah, see, look at like her legs. They're cut off. Well, like what do you think it should be? Well, you could have them kind of swoop in from the side, you know? Okay. Just so it's not this like straight line of nothing. Okay. Watch when the next one comes up. See, look at her. It's really obvious there. Oh, I see. Like that just looks bad. You like, could have it. Like clip art. Yeah, you could have her more like swooping like in from the side. Or have it. Like select tool in Photoshop. Yeah, or have it okay. like fade out at the bottom instead of just being the straight line. Got like you. That. Okay. Yeah, that's a good. That's if a good I, if I were a designer on this game, I'd be like, no. Nah, yeah, fix that. add some smoke effect or something. Yeah, have it. it. Yeah, so it's like, or have her have it them coming in from the side or something, or have right. her bend so like you don't see that part. There is a poop toot. There, there is a <laughs> an element of trying to make this feel like a retro experience, though, right? And that's how they but, used to do it. Eh. It was a little bit more cut and dry back then. Yeah, or you'd have a border or something around the whole thing, mm -hmm. so th that would be better too. So, even even in a retro game, you wouldn't have something like that. Okay, so you I see. You could fix that. So I'm trying to... There's like a barrel up top yeah, there. Yeah, I see that barrel. Okay. Oh, come on. Get this. Get this. Get that. Get this. And then... Boom! Yes. <laughs> that was effective. <laughs> now hit his eyes. Yeah. Vibes. Okay. Is that the only place you could hit him, or is there... Ooh. I'm down to nothing. Oh, I see. That opens up another barrel. Okay. Oh, sh crap. Okay. Okay. There we go. There we go. There we go. I could use some health. Come on, guys. Give me some health. <clears throat> do you think... Uh... Oh, I did. Okay. Now I know what to do, though. Uh, Scottish, Scottish Japanese forever. Hey Vic, do you, would you like to see or be interested in a Deus Ex Human Revolution remaster for the PS4? Um, the original one, right? The yeah. the first. Yeah, because the the sequel was on the PS4, right? It's kind of I... surprising they didn't do that right before. Uh, what... I would. Or what? what, what was it? Was Human Revolution the? Are we getting them mixed up? Uh, no. Was it Mankind Divided? Mankind Divided was the second one. And Human Revolution. Yeah, Human Revolution was, was 2011. The, yeah, yeah, that was the... I would, but I feel like that whole series needs like a total refresh in its art style in a way. You know, it needs a... It needs a not that they look bad, but it need, needed to look amazing. And I think one of the challenges with Mankind Divided is that it was a little uneven. It wasn't state-of-the-art enough when it came out. So a remaster, I feel like, maybe go back to the drawing board a little bit with your design. There's lots of great pieces, and I don't mean to slam the, the team or anything like that, but the uh, it could just look a little more. And I, yeah, I think the experience that they're going to have... Oh, I needed to hit the bell. I saw you hit it, though. The, I think the experience that they're going to have on uh, 
Tomb Raider will serve that team well for when they go back to Deus Ex. And likely when they go back to Deus Ex, it'll be the next-gen systems, and they'll probably do a full refresh on the if you first jump, two games. If you jump and hit his eyes more, would he take more damage, I wonder? I don't know. Because you're kind of like hitting his lips. Oh, that thing hit me perfectly. Okay. Just try jumping just a bit when you hit him with the hair. I guess no. it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, well... Oh, you gotta hit! You gotta hit the bell a few times to get it. It doesn't just, yeah, because it turns. Yeah, there you go. Okay. It's it only turns a little bit when you hit it once. Okay. Oh my God, this is tricky. Come on! How many more times are you gonna have to do it? Oh, you did it! Maybe or no? No. Ugh. Getting it. This boss battle sucks. Getting it. How much hair preparation will Vic be doing for E3? I've started already, Corey. It's yeah, already on it. started to happen. He's on it. Yeah, it's uh, it, many days of hanging upside down like a bat and sticking my head into uh, vats of hair gel and such. It's a whole regime. A whole regimen. Okay. I really hope we could get Dishonored on the Switch. Eh, would that happen? Yeah. I guess Bethesda has ported Skyrim. Yeah. Yeah. Bethesda's got uh, Wolfenstein 2 coming very soon yeah. to this thing. Yeah. Um, and if those sell, like they've got Doom and Skyrim and, and uh, Wolfenstein, so if those sell, I would expect that we're going to get Dishonored 1 or 2 on here. And that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Those are very replayable. Don't call it Poop 2. Oh, so a couple of people are asking about Crackdown 3. Yeah, where is it? <laughs> we were just talking, we talking we, about it. We were just talking about that before we started rolling. Like, where is that game? Oh, we, come we, on! We played it on the show floor like two years ago. I don't think I'm doing myself any favors playing this on an angle and playing it... I'm, here come my excuses. And playing it through the emulator. Or through the uh, recorder. I'm dead. Come on! Whip that hair, Shantae! <laughs> Get Whip up it, there! Whip it, Shantae! You can do it. Oh, it's so... I'm, I gotta look down here. I suck at this. Oh! Frackin' frack frack! Okay, I'm gonna try this one more time, and if I die, that will be the end of the right, stream. I will it. rage quit the whole stream. You can do stream. it, Vic. I believe you. <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> It would be great to have more than two little hearts on my character. This is a tricky game. Okay. Please please just let me skip this. Okay, good, you can. Steep for Switch Dead. Didn't that come out? Didn't that come out on the Switch already? Which? The, uh, steep? No, they're not. Are they doing that? Yeah. Oh, Wasn't yeah, that, they did, were. Didn't that get right. released already? Let me check. No, they, it hasn't. I thought it was released already. No. Oh, yeah, release date to be determined. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, Ubisoft wants to turn everything into a games as service, and that's kind of what Steam Steep is. I love that they they have commitment to their games like that. You know, they have faith in them. Yeah. And it's paid off. Like, who would have thought Rainbow Six Siege is still something that people are playing and talking about today? It's still in the news. Shit. Still in the news. Get up there. Well, you know, if you keep if you make a good game and then keep supporting it, you know, it gives people yeah, a reason we'll keep to come back. Us, like, yeah. look at Dying Light. Yeah. Okay, come on. This feels like this boss ba battle is too hard for. It's hard. Yeah. Early in the game. I thought I was dead. I can't believe I'm not yet. It's you know what it is. It's like I don't have enough health. Yeah. Could you have maybe got health in the town? Like, get an extra couple of hearts? I don't think so. Shit. I did that last time. Okay, one more time. I'm going to do it one more time. Uh, <laughs> do you think Disney can be undercut by Comcast on the Fox deal? Well, they can't be undercut if... Uh, uh, well, Comcast has more money, though, don't they? No. You sure? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Uh, but Comcast could... Actually, well, they, Disney could do... They could actually do. might. They actually might, because they're. I think they're into cell phones and yeah like comcast might have more cash on hand yes than disney 
Okay. Yeah, Disney is paying the value of like 30 Avengers movies for fo for Fox. Like sixty billion dollars is the profits from thirty Avengers movies. You think it'll be the profits? Well, I'm just thinking in terms because if they're paying sixty billion dollars, like, and each Avengers movie makes like two billion dollars, that's thirty Avengers movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Worth of money. Bob Iger said yesterday that people shouldn't think that we're done with Avengers movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did did, it, did anyone ever think they were <laughs> like? Did, did were, I, were they I ever going so. to be like? <laughs> Come on. Come on! There you go. I don't have enough health. That's the problem. I'm taking this on with three could, quarters Could heart. you not have got, like, bought I haven't an been extra hit heart? Yet. I don't think so. I have a, a whistle. I looked at my inventory. Come on! Like, there wasn't, like, a heart salesman no. well, somewhere? There was, but I can't go back to the town. Yeah. Oh, come on. Okay. Get up there. I thought this was going to be a nice, gentle, easy, <laughs> super it accessible looks, it's game. It's deceptive in the way it looks, because it, it looks Come on! bright and colorful. Get this freaking giant frog. <laughs> no! It got me. I've got like one quarter... Oh, I don't have that thing there yet, either. Oh, I did it again! I jumped into the stupid... Okay, we're done. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Rage quit. Yeah, that's it. I think uh, I'll play some more, and maybe I will stream some more if I enjoy it. But uh, that was not an easy was beginning a good try. to Shantae, half, yeah. half genie hero. Uh, that's it. Okay, that's it okay, for our for coming, everyone. stream today. We uh, are not doing EP Live tomorrow. It's a regular rundown, but uh, we'll be back again uh, on Friday with a new EP Live for you. Uh, have yourselves a fantastic evening. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, we've got tons of other content for you to check out. And if you like it, don't forget, we've got that subscribe button, that little bell. If you're so inclined, we've also got a sponsorship button, too. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you tomorrow.